I'm just while <laughs> looking for my slides. Um, my name's Rebecca, and I'm a first year medical student at Glasgow. And today I'm talking to a bit about the transition from being a student at school and then going into medical school and being a university student. So just a little bit about me and my journey first. Um, as I said, I'm a first year, um, and I attend secondary school in Aberdeen, so I'm technically a Scottish student. Um, so I applied to Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh and Glasgow, which I got offers from, and I chose Glasgow for reasons that I'll kind of elaborate on a bit later. So as I said right at the beginning, I've been with EdMed for quite a while now. I first attended this very conference um, when I was in S4, and it was listening to these talks and hearing from the doctors and medical students that made me realise that medicine was what I really wanted to do. So after that, I applied and became a school ambassador. I set up a medical society at my school, because we didn't have one. Um, and I went along with, to the meetings for the school ambassadors and then I attended the medical summer school when I was in S5 which really helped me with my application journey and just getting rid of all the stress that that summer can create. Um, and then after attending the summer school I had all of my interviews and submitted an application, had my interviews and then got offers and chose Glasgow um, about this time last year. So I put these two pictures up, um, not just to embarrass myself, um, <laughs> but because the top one is me two years ago as a school ambassador, and this was me, as you can see here, around Halloween as a medical student. So I don't actually look very different, I don't think. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that I was in your position really not long ago. And I remember when I was sat here, I was thinking, oh my god, I'm never going to make it. I'll never become a medical student. It just seemed like some faraway mythical land that wasn't achievable. And what I'm trying to say is, is if today feels a bit daunting, if you're sat there and something inside is making you think, I want to do this, I really, really want to do this, then you can, because no matter how long it takes you or what route you'll take, you will do it. So I'm just going to tell you what a bit about the university is like, the transition, and what the medical students actually do, because I wasn't entirely sure. So you've had your nice big long summer at the end of S6. Um, You've done lots of fun, cool, crazy stuff. Um, and it gets to August, you've got results day, you open your results, and hopefully, all being well, you've got in. And this is hopefully what it should feel like. I felt a bit like that. This was me on my holiday, so definitely feeling quite happy then. And then there's lots of admin prep, there's lots of things you have to sort out, what accommodation, where you're going to stay, PBG checks, you have to do another one of those for medical school. All of this that you do towards the end of your summer, and then suddenly it's Freshers Week. So for me, because I moved from Aberdeen to Glasgow, I went into halls. This is my bedroom. Um, so I moved into halls. And I remember just before I moved, I was really scared because I, for some reason, just thought, what's uni going to be like? Will I make friends? Um, and I met my flatmates. These are my flatmates. They've given me permission to use this photo. <laughs> um, and we actually get on really, really well. So there's five of us in the North girls' flats. We share a bathroom and a kitchen. Normally works out okay. Um, but there's all sorts of different types of halls that you can go into. That's definitely something you should look into once you've got your offers. Um, during Freshers' Week, there's lots of organised events going on, lots of evening events. It's just a time to socialise, meet people, and make friends. But you don't need to make friends eventually, initially, because it will happen over time, and you will get to know people. And finally, it's lots and lots of fun, but then you do have introductory lectures. We had ours at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, which not everyone was feeling up to, but you need to go along. And then after the fun of Freshers' Week, um, real life begins, and you realise it's not just about meeting people and chatting, but you actually need to go to proper lectures, uh, cook your own food if you're self-catered, um, which when you get back at six is not always what you want to do. Take notes and do work. But also, along with all of this, is fun stuff and taking time to do things that you enjoy and go to, uh, join societies, join clubs, those kind of things. So this is the Walter Medical School building um, <coughs> at Glasgow. It's on the main campus and it's where I am most days. And I'm just going to speak a bit about what, what the medicine side of medical school. So before I go into this, there's a few prompts here. But any suggestions, anyone that got any ideas about what I do? during the week. Just shout out, go for it. <coughs> Please help me out here. <laughs> yes, perfect, that's that one there. Anyone else? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, that was the middle picture. We have all 
all sorts of different types of labs. NPLs, PBL, yes. Uh, that's my PBL there. Um, I'll go into PBL a bit more because that's something that Glasgow is quite big on. Um, do you know what PBL stands for? small group learning, um, you get given a scenario like this, and in a group you discuss what's going on, you create some questions, um, you have some time to go, go over the questions in your own time, do your own research, and then you meet a second time during the week, and in small groups you discuss everything you've learned, and that's the way that you learn. You have a facilitator there who makes sure that everything's been covered, and your facilitator is a doctor. So yeah, lectures, PBL, problem-based learning, um, Glasgow does it, a few other universities do as well. It varies slightly from university to university. Um, anatomy. So, obviously I can't have any pictures of anatomy here, but that's some anatomy notes. Um, there's two different ways that anatomy is taught in medical school. Um, there's either prosection, which is where the specimens have been dissected by a specialist, and then <coughs> dissection where you actually get a donor and in small groups you dissect. Uh, we have a mixture, we have both prosection and dissection. Vocational studies, that's what we call it at Glasgow. I think it's called slightly different things at different unis, but it's all of the ethics, professionalism, part of being a doctor. As part of vocational studies, we go on placements to GPs um, right from the beginning, just see how it runs there, um, speak to patients. Um, we've also been to a hospital to see how it works there, and also to learn things like taking pulses. Um, and finally, labs. So labs can be really sciencey ones, like looking at cells on a microscope, um, to anatomy ones where you look at bones, um, and radiology where you look at x-ray, MRI, those kind of things. And finally, small group teaching. So that could be PBL, or that can be in smaller groups with a basically a mini lecture, but it's more discussion-based. So the way that medical school is once you start, um, you often start as a group of phase one. Um, and this is, I believe, the same in most universities, that the first kind of semester is an introduction to science, to medicine, or like science for medicine. Um, and it's learning all the basics, so things that you're, you're developing what you've already learned at school. Um, so this is my timetable in phase one. We have PBL, some lectures, um, anatomy, VS, um, and we had Wednesdays off, which was brilliant. Um, a lot of unis now have Wednesday afternoons off for things like sports. I actually do um, sports in my societies on a Monday and Tuesday afternoon or evening. So um, I just use Wednesday to prepare for PBL the next day. So phase two uh, for us at Glasgow starts after Christmas of first year. So I've just started it now. Um, and it goes on until the end of your second year. So, so far, so phase two is organized um, where I'm in two blocks um, of specialties. Um, not specialties, sorry. Um, yeah, so like specialties. Um, and we've just started doing limbs and back, which is muscular skeletal. Um, it's much more intense. The workload has increased a lot. We have more contact hours. <coughs> um, similar amount of lectures, but more labs. And it is a lot more clinical based. Um, so they put it a lot more into context rather than just kind of things about cells that don't always make so much sense. So um, yeah, this was, they changed the timetable format, so I'm sorry it's not directly comparable. Um, assessments aren't fun, but I thought I'd quickly just mention them. Um, we have some coursework, we have things similar to the multi-choice you do at school, except in a single best answer because now it's not just one answer's right, they could all be right, but one's the best one. Um, and then some written exams as well, um, normally towards the end of the year. So, I know a lot of people have spoken about medicine questions today, um, but before I go into ones that I had, does anyone have any myths about life as a medical student that you've heard? Or any questions that you're not sure about? <laughs> no? No, we'll just shout them out. We're all friends now, guys. <laughs> Everyone's here today. Exactly. You're not going to offend Rebecca. She's a medical student. <laughs>
myth, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, well, here are mine. Will I have time to do other things? Never have fun? More uni related? Will I have what my flatmate's going to be like? Is it more stressful? Do I only see medics? I'll be that creepy. The answer is a bit, but not that much. <laughs> so, this is the fun stuff. Um, not that medicine isn't fun, the medicine itself is really fun, but there's the other, other side to it. Um, so, things like joining societies. You don't just. So, when you apply to medical school, doing extracurricular isn't just something that they put on the application, just, you know, another tick box. Because it's not, it's to see whether you have a way of relaxing, whether you can do other things outside of just your work. And it's incredibly important to keep it up because it takes your mind completely away from the work you've been doing that day. And it's really good fun. And it is a way to meet people who aren't medical students and make friends with them as well. So I did a lot of dancing before medical school and I've carried that on. Um, also, most universities have a medical society, a medic society, which is actually not that much medicine and it's more about social events, um, but there are specialty related societies as well that you can join if you have a particular interest. The funny story about this one, during Freshers Week, my flatmate said to me on the Saturday, we don't, we're not doing anything today, do you want to come to Double Cross Taster? And I thought, well, I've got nothing to do, I might as well. So I went along and we did some games and stuff, and at the end there was a little competition, and they were like, whoever wins, wins a t-shirt. I won the t-shirt. After that I thought, well, I kind of have to go along now, don't I? <laughs> Um, and then other things, so <coughs> there are uh, organised social events, you can just go out with friends, go to quizzes, this was us, uh, we went to a quiz on a Tuesday, so this week, um, we didn't do very well, 11th out of 13, but it was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not some kind of massacre going on, this was the pumpkin I was holding earlier, that was just my flatmates, um, did pumpkin carving one evening. So I know a lot of people have had questions about kind of timetabling, time management, scheduling. So this was what my kind of life was like during phase one. It's changed a bit now in phase two, but just to give you an idea, the green is my scheduled timetable hours. The orange was my own work that I did, and everything else is everything else. Um, I don't actually create a timetable and follow it, but um, it is something that you could do if you're struggling with trying to fit everything in. And what I found is having specific times for things like my dancing or going swimming um, means that I procrastinate less because I know that I've got a specific time I need to do something by and then I go and I have my fun and then I go over and do a bit more work. And if you have time set aside for the things you want to do, um, then you'll find yourself less inclined to procrastinate when you're meant to be doing work. I love how you timetabled in walk home. It takes half an hour, and if you stop off at Tesco, it takes even longer. <laughs> um, so these are just the other myths, which I think I covered. Flatmates, um, I got really well with. I'd, I know people have had problems with flatmates, but they've always had at least one that they get on really well with. Um, so yeah, we do have a lot of fun. The workload and stress. Um, the workload is a lot. It is a lot of work you have to do, um, and especially in comparison to other courses. But the thing that you have to bear in mind is that the application journey is not just to help you get in, it's to prepare you for medical school. And the way that the, your school is structured now in doing that fires, then hires, then advanced hires, slowly the workload progresses. So then when you go to medical school, it is a lot of work, but it's just like another step up, like from hire to advanced hire. And then when you go from phase one to phase two, it's another step up again. So they do structure it like that to make it quite linear. Um, so yeah, the workload is a lot, I normally, I, everyone's schedule is very different, I work quite well in the mornings, not so well in the evenings, um, so I tend to do more of my activities in the evenings. Um, and I'm not really that stressed, I'm only really stressed around exam times, um, which is the same as at school. So generally I wouldn't say it's that stressful, especially if you keep on top of all of your work. And I don't only interact with medics, um, especially if you join other societies, then you'll see non-medics there, um, and it's great to have friends who both do medicine and who don't, because you can complain with those who do medicine, and with those who don't, you can just forget about it. So, in summary, what has been, what's been in first year been like so far? Uh, it's a bit strange. It does take a while to settle in, um, but when you do, it's lots of fun. It is hard work, but the work's enjoyable. It's really, really interesting 
stuff that you do, and you find that if you if medicine is the right thing for you, then you won't mind doing the work because you'll get so stuck into it that you'll find it so interesting. It is a little stressful, but it's around the same time. So, what are my top tips? Um, know what you're letting yourself in for. So, know, go to things, do your volunteering, do your work experience, speak to medical students and doctors to find out what you're going to do. And know why you're doing it, because the application journey is long, it is stressful, but if you know and you have this passion that you want to do it, then it won't seem like effort at all. And take things a step at a time. Going back to the beginning, as I said, I felt really daunted when I sat in your position. So I thought, how am I ever going to do all of this? But if you don't look at where, what you have to do by the end of S6, but if you look at what you, have, what you want to do by the end of next month or at the end of this year and break it down into steps, it seems a lot more manageable. I think the most important thing is to believe that you can do it. You will get people who say, you haven't taken the right subject, you can't get in, or your grades aren't good enough, you can't get in, or if someone's really mean, they might just say that they don't think you will do it. But if you think you can do it, then you can, and there's no reason why you shouldn't. Another thing that we've touched upon is work with others. I think this whole myth about if you work with others and you compete with them, you're less likely, is, it is a myth. Because if you work with other people at your school and work in societies, then you'll just learn off each other. Say yes to every opportunity. It's hard, I know, even I find it hard, but it'll open up opportunities that you never thought possible. Don't give up, and finally, enjoy it. Does anyone have any questions? So I volunteered with the Royal Voluntary Service, so the RVS um, at my local hospital in Aberdeen, which I think was the best volunteer and work experience I did. So basically once a week I went to the hospital um, and I just spoke to patients. Um, I was on the geriatric ward and I didn't do anything clinically, I just chatted to them. But the communication skills I gained were incredible. So it's made now when I talk to simulated patients who are our patient volunteers, it's made it so much easier. So I did that. I played the piano at a care home. Um, about once a month. Um, work experience wise, I did some work at a GP. Um, so I found that quite hard to get, but I basically created a letter saying I want, I want to get some work experience. I wrote a CV and I actually sent it in the post because people are more likely to open up letters than emails. And I addressed it to the practice manager because I hoped that they might, they might open up. So I did get some GP work experience and I also did Doctors at Work, which is the Aberdeen equivalent of. Um, Insight. I think um, the daunting thing, it is a real issue, okay, because you sat there and you're thinking, oh my god, how am I going to do all of these things? It sounds like a lot of hard work, but what you don't realise is actually doing these things, doing things like the medical leadership programme, doing things like writing for the magazine, it makes the process easier. It opens even more doors for you. It makes you stand out even more. So it actually makes the process easier, not more difficult. So just, you know, when you when you do get home after this weekend, sit down, make a plan, brainstorm, and make a list of all the things that you've heard about, all the extracurriculars that these guys have done, that Patrick's been talking about, that the medics have been talking about, and just start, start organizing your time and just kind of ticking things off and go just day by day, week by week, and eventually you will get through everything you want to get through. Any other questions for Rebecca? Yeah? Why did you last Yeah, <laughs> I did say I was going to say that and I forgot. Um, I really, so my main reason for wanting to do medicine was people. Um, I wanted to work with people and I like chatting to people basically. Um, and Glasgow has got an integrated curriculum, which means that it's not purely lecture-based right from the beginning. So we have some lectures as well on my timetable, but we have PBL, um, which I find really, really good for my learning because I learn really well by kind of talking things through. Um, so the feedback sessions that we have and basically the mini presentations we do really helps me kind of learn it. Um, we also have quite early kind of clinical and patient contact. Um, so we've been to some hospitals, we've been to some GPs, we've already taken pulses on patients. Um, so it was the course that was the main reason, but we're also on the uni campus, which is really nice for the first two years. 
So we really feel like we're part of the university rather than someone on the side. So I think there's all kinds of reasons. I was asked just how you got four medical school offers yet. Any particular trick to that? <laughs> how did you get all four? <laughs> Which is also a Cambridge yeah. test. So, I was so th this is very much a journey. This is very much a process. So this week, like for example, tomorrow we're going to talk in a lot of detail about interviews. Okay, so we'll explain what they are, how to prepare for them, so give you some knowledge. And then on the medical leadership program, when you're in sixth year, you have two days of mock interviews where like 30 doctors descend and just interview you <laughs> in the two different formats and give you feedback. So that's part of the medical leadership program. And in addition to that, if anybody is thinking about coming to the summer school, which uh, Rebecca and Adam did, um, you interview about 10 times there, like at the start of the summer. So the students who come to that, they're like already prepped for their interviews before other students are, are even thinking about interviews, if you know what I mean. And then in addition to that, those students get Skype interview practice with a doctor before every single interview. And after, so, and after as well to do like a bit of reflection. So you couldn't possibly be more prepped for interviews than that. <laughs> I mean, that our, our, <laughs> our approach to interviews is almost identical to our approach to everything else in the application process, which is weird because they're all different. Uh, but it's a combination of knowledge, understanding, and practice. So we start with the knowledge because it creates a base. It helps us bust those myths and make sure you're focusing on the right things that matter, the things that matter for the university you're applying to, the things that matter for the individual applicants for you your priorities. And at that point, you start to delve deeper into the understanding of, of the way the course works and what it entails and what you're letting yourself in for. And again, you're linking back to yourself, to you, whether you're going to be happy there, uh, whether you're going to enjoy yourself, and those are the students who do best. Um, and then you sort of reach a point where you just need to develop the final skills, really. And practice is very much the icing on the cake. Some of the problems we have, um, certainly with interviews, is that students jump straight to practice without knowledge and understanding. Um, and they often go for these organised sort of MMI circuits that sometimes universities do, other organisations do, and they try and make them as high fidelity and as realistic as possible. But when you think about it with interviews, what matters most for a practical uh, test and skill like that, it's feedback, it's knowledge of uh, your weak points, what you're not doing well on, what you can improve on. It's, it's reality and honesty. Which that's, is, that's so true. Know. So it's different to like preparing for an exam or a test. When you prepare for an exam for a test, you want to do it under time conditions, you want to make it as simulated as possible and do that over and over and over again, right? But with an interview, the simulation isn't that important. The, what is more important is your <coughs> delivery, your knowledge. So whether you're practicing with a doctor or you're practicing with a parent, it doesn't make a huge difference whether you've got screens like this or, you know, what actually matters is how often you do it. So a lot of, yeah, so, you know, it, some students, they go to one of these simulated things once and think that they're sorted, but actually the student who's, you know, done about 20, 30 mock interviews with um, some parents, maybe some teachers, some medical students and some doctors will be far more prepared than sure. that. The majority of your practice, realistically, will, for interviews, will be at home and in school. What you really want is a really good foundation to build upon, so you're targeting that as much yeah. as possible. Just another, uh, another thing standing up and presenting at a conference yeah. on why you want to study medicine, all of your extracurriculars, how you relax, how you balance your time. Those are interview questions, aren't they? So actually, standing and presenting at a conference is amazing interview preparation. It's true. Med Mentor is many, many things, but we, we are not subtle. We are not subtle at all. all the time. <laughs> so, you know, this is, a, we try to get as many of our students presenting um, in sixth year because it is amazing for their interview prep. So, um, any other questions for Rebecca? No. Yeah, that's okay. Did you? Did you feel any anxiety doing your hires? And if so, how did you manage to cope with that? Good question. Oh, actually, yeah. So my nap fives, I was quite chilled for. My hires, I was quite stressed for. Um, I think time management's a big one. So I carried on with my dancing um, right up until my hires because that was a way for me to de-stress. Um, 
I also, I did so the night before all of my hires um, and with interviews as well, I always stopped revising um, or stopped preparing. Um, I would put it to one side and I'd do something fun, so watch a movie with family, go swimming, do something like that. Um, I think generally just taking time out for yourself, if things get too much, and if you're feeling stressed rather than just unmotivated, then that's when you need to take a break and do something that you enjoy. If you're unmotivated, that's different. You need to try and kind of think of the reasons why you want to do it. But um, with stress, the most important thing is if you are feeling it, to take time out, and because you won't revise well when you're stressed. Which is that exactly the kind of thing they're looking at you to say to you. That's a great Because it works and it's honest and it's personal to you. Thank you so much, Rebecca. You're welcome. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions, please do email me. I, ha I did this when I was applying. I would literally just like message people and be like, oh, can you tell me this? Can you tell me that? And people now do it to me, and I love 